Oh, probably no, the uh, blue cranberries. You'd like you to put that right over here on this table here, so it's closer for you to access. Okay. Sit next to this. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the family, we want to welcome you and thank you for being in attendance today. Your presence is comforting and appreciated beyond words. And it's our desire today not only to celebrate, but to pres preserve the memories and attributes of Lois <coughs> Tate's amazing life. In the midst of our celebration, we grieve, and we know that grieving is a process. My wife, Nancy, and I took a class years ago. It was a SISM class, SISM, C-I-S-M. And SISM stands for Critical Incident Stress Management. The most valuable thing that we learned in that class was to help people understand that when you're in crisis or trauma or extreme loss, such as this situation, that what you're feeling is absolutely normal for an abnormal or life-altering situation. So what you're feeling today is normal. The emotions you have, the questions you have, the thoughts that, the, that you're processing are absolutely normal. And it's our desire as you grieve together with the family here this morning that you receive comfort and strength from Holy Spirit in these next moments and in the days that lie ahead. It's extremely painful to lose any, anyone we love at any time in our life. And we can find ourselves with more questions than answers, emotions that we're unprepared to process, frankly, can leave us frustrated, sometimes and confused, right? So it's in these times it's a little difficult to know exactly what to say. And I once heard this story that's very appropriate for this moment. A little girl was watching cartoons on the living room floor and was told by her mother that it was time for bed. She said, go ahead and go upstairs, brush your teeth, honey, and say your prayers. I'll be right up to tuck you in. When the mother finally walked upstairs, she saw that her daughter's door was partially opened and when she walked to the door, she saw her daughter kneeling by her bed and heard her daughter saying, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. And the mother quietly stepped in the door and said, Honey, what are you doing? And the little girl replied, You told me to say my prayers and I didn't know what to pray. So I decided to just give God the letters and let him put it into the right word. So it's with that we'll pray and ask God, the one who created us all, to put the letters together into words so that we can honor Lois and her life, honor her the way that she deserves to be honored this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you with mixed emotions. We come to you this morning with many questions. But you're the God who gave us life, and you're the one with all the answers. You're the one who gave us Lois, and you're the one who can heal our hearts. You, and only you, Holy Spirit, are the one who can comfort us. 
but we can find no comfort in anything else. So Holy Spirit, I ask you to fill this place this morning with your presence. Fill this room with your grace. Fill our hearts with your love for us and your love to help us love one another like never before. Thank you for helping us to honor Lois as we remember her life and the characteristics that made her so amazing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So every human being is created in the image of God. Each of us possess characteristics that reflect our Creator. And we honor and remember Lois this morning, not for her shortcomings, because the Lord knows each and every one of us have plenty of those, right? We honor her for her amazing character and for the characteristics of God that she exhibited to her family and friends while she lived on this earth. God always sees the gold that's on the inside of us. Acts 4.12 says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. <clears throat> Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10, or through 10 says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And not only was Lois created in God's image, but Lois Tate was a follower of Jesus Christ. She was born again in a Holy Spirit-filled woman of God. She loved God and was a faithful follower of Jesus, and the light of God shined through her. Here's a quote from Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. She says, people are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out, but when the darkness sets in, their true beauty is revealed only if there is light from within. Lois possessed that light because of Jesus on the inside of her. The Holy Spirit was that light within her. In the Old Testament, we read that when God sent Samuel the prophet to look for the next king of Israel, God gave him specific instructions. The first king, Saul, was big in stature. So God reminded Samuel when anointing the next king of what to look for. 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. If we're not careful, we make judgments on one another by the outward appearance, by the way they look, by the color of their skin, or what they've done or not done, or how someone has wronged us. But how quickly we forget that we've done the same things to one another, right? But God doesn't judge by those standards. He judges us individually by what's in our hearts. So from what I know about Lois, she had an amazing heart. She was kind. She was loving. She was strong. She knew how to forgive. She knew how not to give up. And she knew how to encourage others to do the same. She also knew how to put others first above herself and to help them through difficult times. She embodied the fruits of the Spirit that are a testimony of the character of God that was on the inside of her. If you knew her, you were a witness to the character of the Lord inside of Lois. Martin Luther King Jr. said this, the ultimate measure of an individual is not where he stands in the moments of comfort or convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. You all saw Lois at her best, and you also saw her when she struggled physically and when she struggled with adversity. She was a fighter and had learned to stand strong in the midst of trial. This is the testimony of her life and the measure of what she believed in her heart. The Hebrew word for testimony basically translated means do it again. Do it again. So when anybody gives testimony of someone or someone's life, it's asking, it's, it's basically saying, do that again. We want to see that done again. And when we celebrate someone's life after they've been promoted to be with Jesus, we reflect on their life not just for memory's sake, right? But to take notice and learn by example of how they lived. We then can embrace those amazing characteristics for ourselves if we don't already possess them 
and we too can live them out and see them done all over again. We get to be like those who model the character of God until it becomes what? Our own testimony. You can live out the same attributes that Lois modeled. In another way, to keep someone's memory alive is by talking about memories of them, that you have of them. And I'm sure over the past week you've been sharing memories of Lois and hopefully we'll continue to do that. And at this time, Brian's going to come, her son, and he's going to share some thoughts in honor of his mom. Brian. <coughs> So what I want everyone to know about my mom, Lois, is that she was a great mother. That's something I didn't fully realize until later in life. Not until I went from raising hell to raising kids. Wow. Her two grandchildren, Connor and Ava. Courage and sacrifice that I needed for that, it turned out that I'd already learned from my mom. I'd seen her do it growing up, just didn't appreciate it until I experienced how hard it is. She did sacrifice a lot to be here. Raising us alone for much of the time we were young when my dad traveled for work. In those days, she sacrificed her time, her career, sometimes her sanity. <laughs> her support and influence on me as a parent continued even when we were at a physical distance during the time that she lived in Florida. Things got rough for me. She'd be the first person that I'd call. She needed to be happy just to listen to me then. Our calls would usually last hours at a time. She coached me to step up, take responsibility, take control of my situation. As she liked to tell me when things got hard and I wanted to start blaming, don't be a victim, Brian. I don't know what I'd done without her support during that time. Mom always had, mom always made sure that we had everything that we needed. Many times the things that we didn't really need so much. She was an extremely giving person especially to her kids and her grandkids. But she was generous with us as adults too. I'm sure praying behind our backs that you know, finally get our shit together. <laughs> that love language with us started when we were young. Uh, a memory that I remember pretty clearly is a Christmas, it was Christmas I got my Super Nintendo. I wanted one so bad I could scream and she knew that. So she thought it'd be funny to wrap a bunch of empty boxes, have me open them one at a time until I get to the big present. That was her sense of humor, though. That humor remained, you know, throughout the years. Even on my 40th birthday, she gave me a walking stick, you know, to rub in how old I was getting. <laughs> you know, even, even at the end, you know, when I asked if uh, it was okay if my dad came and visited her in her last days, she said, sure, let's uh, have an ugly contest. <laughs> <laughs> Quality time with her was sometimes sitting in the same room watching television. And uh, after she moved in with me, when she moved back to Ohio and moved in with me, we'd binge watch anything and everything together that we could. I remember watching the entire Breaking Bad series the second time through because I knew she would love it and I wanted to see her reaction. And I loved every second even more than the first time that we watched it. We talked a lot about television. We're always recommending shows to each other. Sometimes we would talk politics. And, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh man, it was, uh, you know, we could get into it. We could spend hours on the phone at each other's throats, back and forth, heated exchanges, <clears throat> ended in both our blood boiling. But as a testament to our relationship and how much we cared about each other, we could always hang up, let things cool off. Things were back to normal next time that we talked. We loved each other in a way that we didn't let that get between us and separate us. My mom's religion and faith were a very important part of her life. I believe her faith is the reason she may remain such a caring person in a world that at times is so uncaring to her. She credited her faith with saving her life. She found her one true love in God. I'm not religious like my mom was. I guess that part of her didn't rub off on me. But she never stopped trying. My mom would pray for me. She'd tell me, I've been praying for you, Brian. I've been praying that you find God. 
I've been praying that you meet someone. I guess that last one actually got through. And she adored Rachel and our daughter Juliet. And they adored her. She gave so much of her love to God, so much faith she put in for him to heal her. In times at the end, she started to get angry at God. And even though I don't share her faith, I knew how much he meant to my mom. I told her, God has heard your prayers. Not everyone gets the time that you've had since your diagnosis. So many people are taken so quickly, Mom. It may not have been exactly what you were looking for, but God did answer your prayers. And look at everything that she was here for since she was diagnosed almost two decades ago. Eight grandchildren, eight, three children engaged, one married, career started, graduation, graduations from college, um, her first grandchild graduating from high school, another one driving. Um, but even so, let's face it, my mom was taken from us way too early. I love you, Mom. <coughs> Thank you, Ryan. One of the things Gwen pointed out was that uh, she had found, you know, looking through her mom's Bible, some verses that she held on to, uh, especially during you know some of her health crisis there. And this is found in Psalm 103, 1 through 13, and I'll, I'll read these to you. Uh, verse 1 says, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. He's slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor we always harbor his, his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love to those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And at this time, one of those is um, when one of her daughters is going to come and share some thoughts on her mom. story three times in one week for a month straight even though you were there I wish I could hear those same stories ten thousand times more now I'm going to share a few myself um, when I was little I was a pain in the ass stubborn and defiant um, I knew that because my mom told me <laughs> three times a week <laughs> for nearly four decades, <laughs> even though I was there. <laughs> um, she prayed for God's grace to deal with me, um, probably more like so she didn't kill me, but um, and she said that one day God showed her that my defiance was really a gift of leadership. And she stopped viewing me as a hellion and started viewing me as, well, a slightly less annoying hellion. Um, strong, she called it. And when that happened, our relationship changed. Um, Mom knew how to handle uh, my fear of ghosts, too, uh, after depriving my parents of sleep for way too long. Uh, one night, Mom busted into my room 
and like a supernatural exorcist started yelling at Satan to vacate the premises. And uh, I was momentarily stunned, I think. I laughed, I sighed as if a weight had been lifted, and then I went to sleep. And she did that every night until I stopped needing it. As a preteen, I thought I would one-up my mom after a fight and run away. She didn't stop me. She even helped me pack my bag, or my backpack. So I rode my bike all the way down the street, and I was roughing it on my own for a whole 10 minutes until I finally got so mad that she didn't come after me that I pedaled back to the house, tail between my legs. And she was, of course, letting us both blow off some steam. And we were fine again almost immediately. Um, thanks, Mom, for letting me feel like I had the upper hand for a minute. <laughs> I'll never forget the Christmas morning. Mom found me sitting beneath the tree with every single present unwrapped. I saw the horror on her face as she looked at the living room covered in wrapping paper and bows with two ki other kids who were bound to wake up at any minute. She somehow performed a last minute miracle and had a wrapping marathon before my siblings woke up. But in the mayhem, name tags were misplaced and uh, poor Brian became the proud owner of my little mermaid watch. Um, Mom was a ma master of gentle subtlety. She was always teaching lessons. Like the time Brian accidentally killed a hamster after giving it a ride in a pillowcase. <laughs> to which she said, now we're gonna have to bury it and the maggots are gonna eat it. <clears throat> a lesson in life and death. And the time I sent her flowers on Mother's Day and she said, I would have really liked an edible arrangement. A lesson in gift getting etiquette. And the time she told Jessica that she better give Joelle some or he's gonna leave. <laughs> a lesson in what? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Finally, let's not forget when my ran mom ran over my cat Tony. I mourned that cat for months. And instead of giving me that old time fills all wounds crap, mom had me create a Tommy memory box and fill it with letters and gifts. She even wrote a letter to him apologizing for the mishap and told him she knew God was taking care of him. Through sharing my feelings about my cat and thinking about all the good memories, I had my first lesson on how to grieve. I could talk to mom for hours about anything. Oftentimes it was about God, the future, or current affairs. We actually worked to cause this together. Sometimes plotting how we would convert family members over to the right side. Sorry, Brian. Um, but mostly she was being supportive, giving me motherly advice and listening to my problems. She was not afraid to admit that she was only human and made mistakes, and she didn't want any of us to repeat them. Because of that, she was able to show multiple perspectives to any situation. Sometimes she'd say those outlandish things, but she had such a good heart. She was my best friend. And she always made me feel better, even when it felt like my world was falling apart. She said, hey, let tomorrow worry about itself. That's not your job. A paraphrased Bible verse that was become, has become a life mantra for me, though it doesn't seem to work as well as my mom said it. It hasn't really hit me that she's gone, and I've heard it will continue to have moments, I will continue to have moments throughout life, like during the holidays, when Maddie takes her first steps, when Lincoln starts like kindergarten, and she's graduates from high school, or when I visit Ohio and it feels empty without her. Or when Biden falls up the stairs again. <laughs> and I want to call mom to chuckle about it. 
<laughs> when I first learned about death, I remember feeling panicked that I would lose my mom one day. She was sitting on my bed, and I said, Mommy, I don't want you to ever die. She said, she told me I didn't have to worry about that because it wouldn't happen for a very, very long time. Standing here today, it feels like it was just yesterday that she said that. She also said that I would see her again in heaven, that she would be waiting for me. But in the meantime, I know she's up there playing poker with Grandma Finn, hunting coons with Grandpa, helping Tommy cross the golden streets, and telling the angels the same stories over and over and over again. Thank you, Mom, for loving us. share some other memories and encouraging thoughts from some of the rest of the family members. Jessica, one of Lois's daughters, shared a memory of how Lois took care of her, her son, Zachary, uh, for the eight months that Jessica was in boot camp. And it was a very hard time for Jessica and Zachary, but Lois helped bridge the gap for Jessica in a very challenging time in her life. And Jessica also shared how Zachary and uh, Lois became very close over the years and towards the end of Lois's life. Uh, he would help take care of her. He would help take out the garbage, wash the dishes. He would go and visit her at the hospital. He kept her company during you know, many of the times that she was struggling in her health. Uh, Gwen also shared a memory of a time when Lois moved to Florida to help her when she was pregnant and a single mom. Lois helped her navigate single motherhood uh, when other types of support were limited. And Gwen also shared that her mom sacrificed a lot, which is another characteristic of God on the inside of Lois. Brian uh, shared also that, that Lois was committed to helping her family. Unfortunately, there was family in Ohio and family in Florida at the same time. And that uh, Lois loved her entire family, but there just wasn't enough of Lois to always go around all the time. So other parts of the family also sacrificed when, when she was gone. <clears throat> Gwen said Lois loved her family so much that during COVID, Gwen was worried for her mom to, to come and see the family. And because she wanted to get COVID um, because of her own struggles, her own health issues. And she said Lois was stubborn. She was going to be with her family, uh, COVID or no COVID. She was, she was going to come and see them. Pam, Lois' sister, said to her, and, uh, and her and Lois had strange pets growing up. Like a fox. I thought that was awesome. A fox. A woodchuck. They have bluebird as a pet. I don't think that lasts very long. <laughs> Um, they had a squirrel that chewed things up. Uh, pets were a part of Lois's life, especially Holly, her dog, and Charlie, her cat. Uh, Pam and her husband Bruce remember a time when Lois was helping them plant or clean around their porch, and Lois came up too fast to get her head and fell back and crushed a bush in a flower bed. Uh, Pam and Bruce, uh, she, Pam said she, they laughed hysterically. Lois didn't find it too funny. <laughs> Pam said she called Lois a holy roller. <laughs> Probably because that's what she was. She was uh, holy because of Jesus and was rolling along with all of his goodness, right? Uh, Pam also said that her and Lois fought like cats and dogs. Maybe that's why they love pets so much. Sometimes her dad would say to them, you either have to fight it out or hug one another. And Pam said they usually ended up hugging. Uh, Pam also said Lois was very smart. She never needed to study for tests. Uh, Pam couldn't figure out how she did it, and she said uh, if I needed her help, she probably wasn't going to help me, but, uh, but she was pretty smart. Uh, Gwen said that Lois had a, a dry sense of humor, some of you may have known that. But she said one time Lois was telling her a story uh, about her and a friend years ago when they were driving around, and that Lois was in the passenger seat and threw a banana peel out of the window and stuck to a cute boy's windshield, right? Is that what happened? <laughs> And uh, Gwen said that Lois could barely get the story out because she was laughing so hard that she was about to wet herself. And, uh, uh, and Gwen kept saying she was waiting for the punchline of the story, and then she realized later the punchline to the story was the banana on the windshield. She thought it was hilarious. Uh, it was the point of... 
I also had the honor to, to have Lois as a student in our, our school of ministry at Bethel. And I didn't think she liked it at first. She was very stoic, and I would say, what do you think? She's like, and so, and every once in a while she'd come up to me with a thought, and she'd have kind of a zinger of a question. I thought, oh, she's, she's paying attention here. And sometimes she would say things to me. I would just look at her, and she's like, you know I'm joking, right? And I'm like, oh, very nervously going, oh, yeah, 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 I know you're joking. But uh, that was kind of our relationship, and we would, she'd come up and share something. We would kind of fist bump, and she would kind of wink at me, and we, would, we knew that, um, that we, she was on track with what was going on. And so, um, everything you've heard here today and things you haven't heard, things you'll continue to hear, all speak to the characteristics of God and of Lois. And um, it's obvious because of how it impacts your lives forever. You're changed forever because of what someone's imparted to you. And so, one of the greatest gifts you can give to the family, um, if you're here this morning, is maybe to have maybe a couple of you stand up and share a story or a testimony or something that's funny. It could be something small that could be a gift to the family. So if you would like to do that this morning, we'll wait for a moment here. If you do, stand up. Just tell us your name and uh, share your memory. We'll wait just a couple minutes here. I know somebody's got a great story here or something like that. Oh yeah, he's here. Is he here? Let's get his perspective. That's okay. So hopefully sometime today or sometime in the near future you'll be able to do that for, for them. You either email them, call them and say, Hey, when the pastor said that, I had totally forgot about this stuff or this idea that they did, or something that happened. And it's very important to do that. That's how you keep someone's memory alive, is to talk about them. The last thing you want to do is not talk about them, because the pain or whatever. You, you ease your pain, you work through trauma, you work through the difficulty by talking about them. I lost my mom two years ago, and we tell stories. I tell my dad, I'm like, Dad, do you remember when mom did this, or this recipe she made? Or he'll call me and tell me that. It's, it's very moving. So I encourage you with that. So. It's, what you've heard today is just a small snapshot of Lois's life. And our prayer is that you, you can see the beauty of who she was to her family and to her friends. Our prayer is that you can see the beauty of Jesus in her while she lived, even in her difficulty. But most importantly, that because of her faith in Jesus, she continues to live for eternity with God. And my encouragement for you today is do not leave her without Jesus. Lois did and she's standing and seeing his glory right now. And that's the only way to have eternal life, is through Jesus. It wasn't because of her own abilities or her goodness, but because Jesus, who gave his life up for her and his amazing grace to forgive her of all of her sins. And at that, we're going to invite uh, Hal Kendrick up. He's going to close us out by singing Amazing Grace. <laughs> 